right, Kirk Fletcher here on this Thursday. Yes, yes, yes. I love playing, putting these, you know, borders up in my playing, you know, no bend notes really, no much, not a lot of vibrato and stuff, just as an exercise. Because there was a time in blues guitar and guitar in general that there wasn't a lot of bent notes. You know, I mean, Lonnie Johnson did bend notes, but there was a style like, you know, with people like, well, B.B. King even, T-Bone Walker, Laurel Folsom, a lot of guys, even like Pee Wee Creighton and a lot of these different guys, Robert Lockwood Jr., you know, and players like that, they didn't really bend notes a long time ago. So I like to incorporate some of these ideas and some of these phrases into my playing now. Because it's fresh. It's something different. It's going against the grain, you know, from what everybody else is doing. You know, you're sort of like creating your own pathway, you know. So I like to always go back to find out things, you know, about music. You know, I study these records and things for life, everything. History, blues, where it came from, you know. And to me, it's always nice to have you know, in blues, it's nice to have rules. It's like, if you're going to write a song and compose a song yourself, that's fantastic. Do everything you want to do. Use every pedal, do whatever you want to do to make that song what you want it to be. But in blues, a lot of times, you know, I feel that people kind of think that, you know, well, you know, it's just blues, so, you know, I can just, like, do whatever, you know, but I think in lies the beauty of blues is having these different, you know, kinds of blues, you know, like you got your West Coast blues, you got your Texas blues, you got your Chicago blues, you got the Delta blues, you got so many different forms of blues, you know, so I've really went out of my way to study a lot of these different styles, you know, and kind of find out what makes them tick, you know, and this is something that I would do that I've been doing for years, you know. And I was very fortunate to play with a lot of harmonica players and a lot of blues musicians that were really versed in the music one at a time when I wasn't that versed in the music. I didn't really know about all these more obscure artists. So, you know, to like appease them, to make them happy, you know, versatility is always a great thing. And today's blues guitar player, you know, if he's accompanying somebody or harmonica player or more of a traditional blues artist, they kind of have to cover a lot of bases, you know. I remember, you know, when I first joined joined Ken Wilson's blues band, first of all, I was super excited, and Ken Wilson is fantastic, you know, and he would always tell me, you know, like, man, a guy that can string bend like early B.B. King and then play like Robert Lockwood Jr. or Jimmy Rogers, that's like, amazing you know so i went out on my way to try and approximate those styles you know i wanted to play and i wanted to be desirable to harmonica players and a big person for me was meeting al blake al blake was the guy who sat me down and showed me like a position country blues you know like stuff like uh stuff like that I mean all the A position stuff and also you know backing up the harp is just good you know stuff to know even just playing regular blues or, you know just accompanying another guitar player or whatever and I've talked about this quite a bit but really I think you know rules are cool you know you kind of stay within the confines of this style and then you express yourself you learn how to express yourself staying with inside this box you know this is only for me this is what i really like to do you know and i like to really study and find out what makes robert lockwood jr what makes this sound why you know it swings hard you know when he's not playing the country blues style you know even when he backed up people on records you know he would just like it would swing so hard and he had a killer tone. I'm sure it was probably some hollow body guitar, you know, through a small amp, you know, recorded with a lot of the room sound. And actually even talking about Robert Lockwood Jr., 
This record here with Johnny Shine is called That's My Broom. I'm really, really into this and really into Robert Lockwood Jr. I mean, his style. Johnny Shines is amazing on this record too. And this cover is amazing. I love, I've been buying a lot of stuff on this guys and having the different, you know, artwork, you know, and I just think that's fantastic. You know, he's probably at like King Biscuit or something like that doing his uh, radio show or something like that. That's just amazing. I got a young Robert Lockwood Jr. So this record is great. It's got like uh, Pearly B on there, which is like, you know, amazing. And Sweet Woman from Maine. Oh man, it's amazing. <laughs> and also been getting into some Sunny Boy. This is a different uh, cover too. I think this is the Down and Out record, you know, but it has a different cover on it. And it's just fantastic. I mean, it's it's just amazing. You got Don't Start Me to Talking, I Don't Know on there. My um, All My Love in Vain. I mean, I just love Sonny Boy Williamson too. Rice Miller, you know, a lot. And this record cover is really cool. I think it says something like the greatest blues guy or something that's in French, you know. I love it. Ah! <laughs> and what else do we have down here? Let's see. Um, you know, that's kind of what I've been doing with my time, you know, since we've been kind of locked down, I've been just buying a lot of stuff from Discogs and I'm here in Switzerland. So, you know, that's how I've just spent a lot of my time is just listening so much, you know, and I've done recently a challenge to myself to learn 30 songs, you know, that covers everything from like some Elmore James, some Muddy Waters and all those just so I can insert those in my set, you know, and I think this is a fantastic time to do that, you know, to kind of give demonstrations of all the things that I love. It makes me happy, you know, and uh, this record here, um, Earl Hooker, play your guitar, Mr. Hooker. And, you know, it's funny because I played this Dan Electro um, guitar and I think um, Earl Hooker at one time played a double neck down electro guitar. And also I've seen pictures with him with a double neck SG. And I've been playing a Gibson SG a lot too. And it just really has that really bright kind of sound. And I always just love that so much about Earl Hooker's sound. You know, one of the kings of the Chicago blues guitar. He was fantastic. All of the great guitar players talked about him you know, Earl Hooker and his slide guitar playing was fantastic. He was one of the first guys to use effects, you know, in a really soulful way, you know, there's just, he's just amazing. I hear he was quite the character too. So that just makes the story even that much more fantastic. So definitely check out Play Your Guitar, Mr. Hooker. And if you get the record, it has, um, I think like, um, a James Brown tune on there too, out of sight and one of those as an instrumental and he plays the slide on this version of the record. Oh my God, <laughs> it's amazing, you know. So I would definitely check that out. And um, the Dan Electro guitar is just a brand new uh, guitar off the shelf. But the cool thing about this one is that you can intonate it. Sounds great. And it's easy and it's inexpensive and you could put a flat, I have flat wound strings on here, you know, 12 gauge or something like that. And it's just a great thing. And I also have it wired where it's like uh, out of phase too, on uh, with both pickups on. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'll try. <laughs> regular get a regular one without this intonation that would be even more out of tune than normal <laughs> but you know the wound um g string helps too a little bit more with the intonation you know but i love this guitar i play a lot on this guitar and also the um neck pickup i can almost get sort of a t-bone kind of early t-bone walker sound out of it too you know and also another guitar that I like for the real Chicago, a little bit later, 60s Earl Hooker tone is this uh, SG. And this is just your uh, 
you know, 2018 Gibson SG, the 61 reissue, you know, not an expensive guitar and you can make a lot of music on it. It already has pickups that are kind of bright, you know. Almaco 5 humbuckers in it and it's just a really amazing kind of tone you can get out of this thing. So yeah, I've been like really getting into playing a lot of, you know, that kind of, you know, something about my ears changed and I was like, I'm liking brighter guitar tones, you know, um, lately, you know, so this guitar really, you know, does a great job of that, you know, and it's fun. <laughs> so anyway, there are some records and what Kirk is up to during his time, you know, away from gigging, you know, trying to make the best use of it. And I hope you are too. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Happy Thursday, everybody. And we all got to stay tough and do the right thing. All right. Take care.